Hello, this is Domenico again with Easynomics, and we're going to continue looking at non-price determinants of supply. We'll be looking at price of related goods, in this case, joint supply, since we already took a look at competitive supply. So again, just a note, today we're looking at non-price determinants. of supply and we're looking particularly at prices of related goods specifically joint supply all right and how we're going to graph and illustrate this concept so we're looking at joint supply okay so let's go ahead and use two, mo two, uh, two graphs to illustrate this. Here's one and the other. And a typical example that we can use, again, we can go back to the uh, use of a farmer producing on their farm. And in graph A, this will be the market for beef and in graph B this will be the market for milk okay so milk is derived from cows cows can produce beef and milk. So here we perhaps we have a farmer uh, that has cattle on his land and with that cattle he can either produce beef and also uh, milk. So let's go ahead and label our axes. And that's what we mean by joint, right? So one cow can produce both of these. If we produce more beef, we can also generate more milk. So on the x-axis we're measuring the quantity supplied and on the y-axis, we're measuring the price. And again, we're going to have an upward sloping supply curve. And we'll label this S1. And we're going to remember that our supply curve is equal to our marginal cost curve. And we'll label this S2. So we'll have a price set for beef here with the quantity supplied here. And we'll have a particular price set for milk at this point and this point. And we're going to go ahead and label this. So here we have price set for beef at P1 with quantity supplied set at Q1. And we'll have the price of milk at P3 with the quantity supplied at Q3. This will be point A. This will be point C. Okay. So let's say, for example, that the farmer begins to notice that the value of beef starts to increase. So he's going to keep more cows on his farm uh, in order to provide more beef. The rise in price of beef is incentivizing the farmer to increase their quantity supplied of beef. So price rises from P1 to P2, and thus on the farm we see an increase in the quantity supplied of beef. So perhaps the farmer um, is uh, increasing his quantity supply by purchasing more, uh, more, more cows. So there's an increase in the quantity supply from Q1 to Q2. That is a movement along the supply curve from point A to point B. And as a result of the farmer acquiring more cows on his farm, he can also generate more milk. So milk production increases from S2 to S3 on this farmer's farm. Price for milk is held constant but because of the increase in the quantity supplied of beef we see an increase in the supply of milk. From S2 to S3 with the quantity supplied increasing on this farm from Q3 to Q4 moving from point C to point D. So here we notice in this first scenario, 
scenario number one. For joint supply, that when the price of beef rises, that leads to the supply of milk increasing. So they move in the same direction. That's a positive causal relationship. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper one exam. As can be seen, we have two graphs uh, being used to illustrate the concept of joint supply. In graph A, we're looking at the market for beef, and in graph B, we're looking at the market for milk. On the x-axis of both graphs, we're measuring quantity, and on the y-axis, we're measuring price. We'll notice that we have three upward sloping supply curves labeled S1, S2, and S3 in accordance to the law of supply, and we will remember that the supply curve is equal to our marginal costs of production. In the market for beef, the farmer has a price, uh, the, the, the price of beef is set to P1, providing a quantity supply to Q1, which is point A. In graph B, the market for milk, the price of milk set at P3, provides a quantity supply at Q3 along the S2 curve, which is point C. The farmer notices that there's an increase in the price of beef from P1 to P2 that encourages the farmer to acquire more uh, cows. And so the quantity, which increases the quantity supplied on uh, his particular farm. And here we're moving along our supply curve from point A to point B, or quantity supplied increasing from Q1 to Q2. As a result of the farmer uh, having more cows on his farm, he is able to also increase his supply of milk. So the supply of milk increases from S2 to S3. And although price is held constant for milk at P3, we see that as a result of the increase in supply to S3, the quantity supplied has increased from Q3 to Q4, right, from, uh, from moving from point C to point D. So that is our first analysis of joint supply, and this is how we would graph it and analyze it. Now let's look at a second scenario with price falling. So we're just going to use the same graph, but just relabel a few points. And this will be scenario number two. Okay, so just give me one moment. Here we go. Just gonna get rid of that labeling. Okay, almost there. Okay, so in this scenario, we'll have price fall, and then we'll take note of what happens to uh, the supply. So we're starting at P1 with a quantity supplied of beef at Q1. This is our point A, and um, we'll start here at S2, this will be point C, price is at P3 with Quantity supplied at Q3. All right, and that will be point, yeah, point C. So the farmer notices that the price of beef is falling from P1 to P2. As a result, they will decrease their quantity supplied of beef on their farm from Q1 to Q2. This is movement along the supply curve from point A to point B. As a result of the farmer decreasing the quantity supplied of cows leading to beef on his farm, he is thus generating less milk. So the supply of milk decreases from S2 to S3. And thus we see a decrease in the quantity supplied from Q3 to Q4 at their new supply curve of S3. So here we notice that as price falls for beef, the supply of milk decreases. So they move in the same direction. Again, it is a positive causal relationship. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper one or potentially paper two, paper three exam for the new IB syllabus. We'll call this scenario number two. So as can be seen, we have two graphs illustrating the concept of joint supply. We have um, 
graph A, which is the market for beef, and graph B, which is the market for milk. We have three upward sloping supply curves labeled S1, S2, S3 in accordance to the law of supply. And we'll also note that our supply curve is equal to our marginal costs of production. On the x-axis, we're measuring quantity. On the y-axis, we're measuring price. In the market for beef, price is set at P1 with the quantity supplied at Q1, which is point A. And in the market for milk, we have a price set at P3 with a quantity supplied uh, at Q3 along their S2 curve, which is point C. As a result of, the, of a fall in price for beef from P1 to P2, the farmer decreases his quantity supplied of beef from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the supply curve from point A to point B. As a result of a reduction in the quantity supplied of beef, we see a decrease in the supply of milk from S2 to S3. Although price is held constant for milk at P3, the supply is decreased from S2 to S3. And we see a decrease in the quantity supplied from Q3 to Q4 along their new supply curve of S3, which is uh, you know, um, moving from points C to D. And that's it. We have graphed and analyzed joint supply, two scenarios in this video, and there's a previous video graphing and analyzing competitive supply, illustrating non-price determinants of supply, specifically prices of related goods. And that's it. Thank you so much, and see you next time.